Hey, can you say? Well, good morning and a very warm welcome back to the farm. If I look exhausted, it's because I am. We had about three hours of sleep living in a house with one bedroom, one bed for all four of us. Well, it doesn't mean we get an awful lot of sleep. So we're feeling a tiny bit jaded this morning, but we have just got back from a week away from the farm and I can't describe how incredible it is to have had that space away to come back and see just how amazing spring is and how much has changed. All of the trees have suddenly unfurled their leaves. Well, not all of them. You see the apples behind me are still waiting. But a lot of the bigger trees have all unfurled their leaves. There's Fifi begging to be let out. Um, there's the birds. The bird song is just an amazing Everything's got little flowers. We planted a whole load of bulbs and they're all starting to kind of pop out of the soil and they've got the most beautiful little flowers. We don't remember what they are, so that you know, there's kind of surprises everywhere we go. Everything's got flowers. The bees have arrived um, and it's all just a buzz with life. It's amazing. We've been super busy since we got back, so we'll catch you up on what everything we've been um, going on. And well, let me get these chickens out because the poor things are desperate um, and we'll catch you up in a second. Still So we've had a bit of a change of names. This is Dotty, the same. There's Fifi, obviously, um, our beautiful cockerel from Thea and B. The little speckly kind of grey one, Crusoe's renamed to Blue One. Where's Blue One? Yeah? And then little Pip is Duck. And to say that they've brought us a lot of joy would be a massive understatement. Look, Dotty's saying good morning, Crusoe. Say hi, Dot. Hi, Dot, Dot. Hello, my sheep. Sorry, buddy. I haven't got anything for you. So he's ready with his trowel. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. Come to do some digging. You can do some digging like your big brother. All oh, right. Well, we've got maybe no digging today. Maybe it'll be a day of. Well. Doing the finishing off the chicken coop. Yeah. Carrying on with the um, chicken run. So, chicken Perfect. Coop, chicken run. All things chicken today. So All I'll get set up chicken. after breakfast. All right. Um, should we have eggs for breakfast? No, we should really, shouldn't we? <laughs> Sadly, not yet from our own, but soon. Yeah. Um, eggs for breakfast and then crack on with some work. Good. So... <laughs> this is Mr Phoenix's morning routine. Right, that's Fifi off. Anyway, from here, Fifi takes himself off for a walk of the perimeter of the farm and it is hilarious. He goes sometimes up the road towards Maria's house, down to the lawn, often across there, <laughs> to Joelle's house, 
We are nervous about something happening to him, which is why the run is getting reinforced today. But it is very sweet to see him kind of rule his roost. Should we go get the bread? No, we look. Come on, you're going to jump. Good work. Right, should we go get the bread off the gate? Come on, let's go. No, mommy, I have chicken eggs. Yeah, and we can have chicken's eggs, hey? Yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Let's eat the chicken Every morning, a baker drives down our road at about 4 a.m. and leaves bread hanging on the gate for us. I absolutely love it. Daddy! Here you go. Are you going to take the bread inside, Crusoe? Come on. Good work, bud. Let me help you. There we go. Can you take that inside? Eggs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let me in there, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well done. Two. Two. Three. Right, wait, wait, wait. We've got to get the pan. Where's the pan? Mummy, where's the pan? Right where Crusoe's standing. Careful of that Thank egg. You. Hold that egg like it's an egg. That's our own olive oil. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. How many eggs do you think you're going to eat? Blue one. Blue one. That's it. That's enough. We got six eggs there. Mm -hmm. Definitely enough. Yum, yum, boys. Good work. Look at that. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Right, bring your plate, bud. Should we have some eggs? Yeah. Where's your bread? Yum, yum. All right, that's breakfast done with. Eggs are a great way to start the day. You've probably yum, noticed. Yum, <laughs> yum, yum. You yum, probably... Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> You probably noticed that Crusoe loves to cook the eggs with his daddy. Um, he also likes to play with them on his plate, but doesn't eat too much of them. No, Crusoe, we're going to use that now to get all of our tools together and take it over there to the chicken hut and finish the chicken coop today. What do you think? Are you going to help? Yeah? Sounds like a plan. You know what's going to be nice about finishing this project? What's that? Tidying up. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a mess, isn't it? Yeah. I tried to put some stuff in a barrow yesterday, but then Crusoe started offloading it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You know what I love is getting to know these chickens. Like, they all have individual personalities. And so many of you commented on the fact that that would be the case. So the white one, little Dottie, like them. Like them. does she like it? <laughs> She's definitely the bravest. Um, and the most friendly of the hens. She's de always the first one out and she's the one that's kind of, you know, lets Crusoe closer and, and lets him feed her. Good boy, Crusoe, well done. <laughs> that's so cool. Pip, the little brown one, is the most flighty. I wouldn't say she's necessarily nervous, but she's definitely the first to kind of flap away. She doesn't like you coming too close. And then blue one, who was called Spotty, but let's be honest, that was a rubbish name. Crusoe's renamed her Blue One. Blue One is, um, I think we could just be Bluey for short. Um, Bluey's just a bit shy. She kind of likes to stick to herself. And old Fifi here is just an absolute dude. Um, I know a lot of you were also concerned about the safety of Crusoe around a rooster, um, but he ha has got the loveliest temperament and he was raised by B um, from the Indie Project and she, has always fed him by hand and made sure that he feels very loved and looked after. He definitely had a lot of handling since he was a chick. 
which is why we were so excited to, to kind of give them a home. We're also trying to spend as much time as we can every day in here with the chickens, just quietly letting them, you know, continue to get used to us, get used to Crusoe's presence and the way he moves and behaves. And yeah, um, yeah, we just we're really aware of all of it. But anyway, on the subject of the coop, you better get busy. Yeah, I'll crack on. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to build today, except one thing I do know, two things I know. I need to make this space here protected against the wildlife, foxes, dogs, other, other animals like that. So we need to make it a safe space for Fifi and his girls. Um, we also need to finish the roof on the chicken coop. And we also need a couple of perches for the chickens to sit on. So those are the three things that we're going to have a look at today. See how far we get. Fifi's clearly very excited. So is my son, Chris. Come on, let's go. One of the things that really made Portugal start feeling like home for me was when we were able to start getting deliveries to the house. Something that's always been really fascinating to me is my family history because my mum's side of the family, I think it was my mum and then her mum were both born in Zimbabwe, but my grandparents came from the UK. On my dad's side of the family, we have a lot of Dutch heritage and my dad was actually born in Ecuador. So I've always wondered where on earth did we actually all come from? Which is why I'm so excited that we've partnered with my heritage to take their DNA test. This just arrived in the post today. I'm going to do the test, send it off, and in about four weeks' time, we should get the results. And I'll be able to track a little bit more about my family history and find out where we all began. This box comes with all of the instructions, really nice and clear. There's a couple of swabs in here, which you take cheek swabs with. And my heritage are really, really careful with all of your private information. So once your DNA has been analysed, it's completely destroyed and it's never shared with anybody. Which is really reassuring. Get that off to the post office and then we wait. My Heritage is the number one DNA and family history service in Europe. So not only will we be finding out my family's origins, we may even uncover some new relatives too. We've used their family history services for John's family and loved animating some old family photographs for his mum a few months ago. Anyway, four weeks later and... Have you seen my darling? We have an email from My Heritage. No ways. We do. Okay, let's have a look. What? 89% North and West European. Oh, 5% Scandinavian. That's all right. That's it. That's so cool. Dang. So, for North and West and European, South Africa, Western Cape. I love this. I want to do it now. Look how it's like, it's like zoomed in on the Netherlands, hasn't it? It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually got like really, really specific. So if like me, you are super curious about your own family history, click on the link below to buy your own DNA kit and use the code the newbies to get free shipping. Well, John gets started on the coop. I wanted to show you something quickly and just say a really massive thank you. So this video is coming out on a Sunday and 
while I'm filming it now, we haven't quite got there yet, but we may have just tipped over the 100,000 subscribers mark, which is bananas. We still cannot get over the fact that that has become our reality. And it's because of all of you. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much to every single person who tunes in every time we put a video out, who comments with advice and stories. Um, it just, it means so, so much to us. And I mean, ugh, it's hard to put into words. Anyway, we're going to work on a special kind of 100,000 subscriber commemoration video without Matt sounding a bit naff. Um, but it's a huge moment for us and it's a huge moment for all of you who've been a part of it right from the very beginning, um, which is nearly three years ago now. And yeah, so we'll put together a fun video, which we're kind of dreaming up in our minds. We're excited to work on it. But I wanted to show you something really, really sweet, which one of our subscribers sent to us in the post the other day. Um, I shared them on Instagram the other day. So if you follow us, you would have already seen them. Um, let me put some lights on in here because it's a bit dark. Um, but Marilena Phillips, thank you so much for our little pig dolls. They are the cutest thing I have ever seen. Have a look at these. Let me take them into the light so that I can do them justice because they are amazing. So I'll put a, pop a link down to um, her page so have a look at this, pop them in my pocket. There's me with my little green dungarees and apart from my greenhouse. Here is Mr. John with his newbies branding on, his backwards cap, a tape measure and a hammer. I mean, the attention to detail is incredible. And here are the boys. There's little Crusoe in his rain suit with his wellies and of course an apple and my little baby Sawyer with his beautiful ginger locks, which dad is extremely proud of, in his little baby grow, and sat on a little stool. They made us so happy, so thank you so much. And I also wanted to say a special hello to Nancy today. Um, Nancy's carer wrote to us to say that they watch our videos every time we release one, so a big hello to you guys in Chicago. Thank you so much for being here, um, and we hope you have a wonderful week. Lots of love, everybody. Now I'm going to go and show you around my greenhouse because we have been busy, busy, busy. While I'm walking up there and John's working on the chicken coop, I also wanted to say thank you to everybody who wrote in with advice about chicken keeping and coop building, etc., etc. Um, this is our first go, so we've got lots to learn and all and every bit of advice is so appreciated. Um, I'm sure John's told you exactly what he's doing today, but basically trying to reinforce the fence to keep them a bit safer. Um, at night time, please rest assured that coop is completely impenetrable. The last thing we want is our new feathered babies to get eaten by a fox. Um, and they do have ventilation. I am aware of mites. We're gonna clean their coop out regularly. And yeah, hopefully, we will have a very happy, healthy flock for years to come. So on the weekend, a tractor's coming just to help us till this because we've left it a little bit too long and it's all got very hard and compacted. But have a look at how this is coming along. So first things we did was dig these beds around the side and um, use the tiles to line them. I then, if you remember, cobbled the path outside the front of the greenhouse, which is coming on really well. It's a bit of a slow job because... Um... Hi, Hi, baby. Well, you get distracted basically and i need to keep putting kind of um sand in the cracks because every time we put water on it washes away so a bit of learning to be done there but we're planting herbs out the front here we've got um some thyme in the corner there lots of rosemary over there lavender which the bees are loving and down here yeah, i've got some yeah. oregano more rosemary and some pennyroyal so I'm desperate to get my hands on some basil. I also planted a pot of coriander, which is there by the chickens, because it likes somewhere cool and is partly shady. Um, so I'm trying to keep that a bit cooler. Oh, and lemongrass from our friend Maria in Porto. Very excited about that. I've always wanted lemongrass. But now, have a look inside. What's there? Can you tell me? So have a look at this. Progress. What are they? Tiny baby seeds. Yeah. What are they, Bubba? No, these are growing. Yeah, they're growing, aren't they? These are growing. growing. Well, are they going to be big ones? Yeah, we young jungle spray. Is it? They're even stronger. And those are stronger, aren't they? Yeah. Big ones. Careful, gently. Don't pull them, Crusoe. Gently. Mommy, when I had you so we have various things growing in here 
unfortunately my labeling has been completely dismal so first time i just used the packet that the seeds came in and that blew away so in these trays i know i can't go away sweetie this is my greenhouse um in these trays i know i've got tomatoes and i think it was cucumbers i think these i think are john's lupins doing very very well um and in this one are some sweet peas and apparently some melons don't recall that um and then these in the egg trays unsure 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 beetroot unsure Sorry. so um it'll all be a giant surprise over here i recently found seeds for climbing flame lilies which i'm so excited about there's the packet because the flame lily is the national flower of Zimbabwe. So I really hope that those do really well and we can put them somewhere glorious and enjoy them because flame lilies are absolutely beautiful. And then down here in my pots are my tomatoes and behind me the peppers. So I've got two pots of cherry tomatoes because we love cherry tomatoes and just one pot of big tomatoes. Um, and oh my gosh, you can smell them. They're beautiful. I love the smell of tomatoes. They're doing really, really well. And I am running something of a little experiment here, which I'm interested to see how it goes. What are you doing, buddy? Please don't pick them, sweetie, please. They're growing. Hey, so you must leave them in there. Like a baby. You got baby plants. Um, I'm running a bit of an experiment. In this pot, I put soil with quite a lot of charcoal in it, or kind of um ash and burnt bits of wood from the fire that we did outside the greenhouse here with the last of kind of the clear up so this has started recently mummy go away so usually when he wants to do something he knows he's not allowed to do what do you want to do go away your house yeah but this is my house <laughs> two-year-olds anyway so this part over here has got lots of charcoal on it and this part down here doesn't and i'm really interested to see which one does better? My dad watched an interesting documentary which said that using charcoal in your compost is obviously an amazing source of carbon. And then using water from the pool, which is full of algae, gives even more nitrogen and nutrition. So we're really interested to see if there's any difference between these cherry tomatoes and these ones um, and how they all do. So I'll keep you posted. How is it, Crusoe? Does it work? What noise does Fifi make, Crusoe? I did it. Oh, well, darling, that's a job well done, I think. But I think we got some very spoiled happy chickens, which is exactly what we wanted, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. Now, apparently, we need to get rabbits, so you better start building a hutch. Bye bye, Daddy. Bye bye, Daddy. It is a good day for an ice lolly, buddy, but should we do our work first? Hey, John is off to Porto and it is the most glorious afternoon. So John has left me with a job that I am feeling quite intimidated by, but he assures me that he's confident I can do it. So I'm going to do my best. In order to water our vegetable patch, which is taking shape and the greenhouse stuff, we are having to walk from the swimming pool across the field backwards and forwards with a watering can to get enough water so it's high time we installed some kind of pump system so this morning john bought this little pump from max matt and a nice big hose pipe and has asked me to try and connect them up and get them pumping out of the swimming pool it's not really a swimming pool out of the reservoir so that we can start distributing water easier around where we're growing everything it's a very necessary needed job i'm just not sure i can do it Anyway, I think I need a tape measure and a knife to start us off, and then I'll do my best. Are you coming to help me? If I show up, will you 
I think this is a trick. John hates plumbing. This feels like plumbing to me. He said to me when he left, I think this would be a fun project for you to do. I think you'll really enjoy it. I smell a rat. Okay. Okay, so John said, I'm pretty sure there'll be things in here, like the parts that you need to connect the pipe. There are no parts. The only thing that's in here is this pump. So I'm assuming you just put a pipe into the hole there and one coming out here. And that's all we're gonna have to do. I just started reading those instructions and there's all sorts of stipulations, which I don't understand. So I'm going to use the excuse that my toddler's wandered off to go find him. There he is. Where are you going, buddy? Where are you going? Can you help me do the water pipe? Can you come and help me cut the water pipe? Come on. We come, we come, we come. Where are we going, darling? Um, the sand pit. The sand pit? We come, we come. Oh, buddy. We come, we come. Okay. We'll go for a bit, okay? Right, I have both of my helpers and we're heading back up to the water pump project. So that goes in there. genuinely don't understand how that's supposed to work. There's nothing else in the box, so I haven't left anything. I am missing my husband. So, I'll leave this looking like I've done it, um, but asking John to come and sort it out when he gets back. You want mommy's hat? Okey dokey. Here we go. Whoa, fancy pants. Is that a nice hat? Hey, should mommy wear your hat? Yeah. Okay, where's your hat? You got mommy's hat. You look so cool, my boy. <gasps> John's back. Wow, this is intriguing. So, um, a few weeks back, um, we had, we, we went to pick up a load of plants from a lady called Maria in Porto. Uh, Maria, shortly afterwards, she texted and she said, Hey, John, um, I know that you're a pretty handy guy. And I know that Tara comes up with all these wonderful ideas for you to build. I've got these old doors. Um, would you like to come and have a look at them and see if you could do anything with them? Now, here's a challenge for you, team. I've got a fair idea of what I might do with one or two of the doors, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all of them. So if you guys have got any ideas about what to do with a door, comments below, let us know, um, and we will have some fun with them. Okay, I'll just come around here. All right, so these are 17th century doors. Look at uh, these. Wow, Crusoe, look at those. What is it? They are absolutely beautiful. 
17th century, that is incredible. Yeah, and they've got all the old ironworks on them as well. Wow. So we've got... One, That's incredible. Two, three, four, five, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six of these, I think. Wow, and are they all different? They're all a little bit different from Those each other. Those are beautiful. Gosh. Oh, my love, I'm so excited. I go get my thinking cap on too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll we'll just pop those here. That is so cool. Look at the hinges. It's amazing, well, isn't it? It's the end of another day. I've got dinner on the go behind me, so we can't be long, but I just want to show John quickly the water pump. Make sure it's not just me being completely daft. But let's see. Should we go show Dad the water pump, Crusoe, and show him why we couldn't fix it? Um, it's broken. Well, broken. There you go. So, so a few more bits and sticks. pieces. Yeah. You can get that in Marco tomorrow yeah. morning. Alrighty. Okay, Good. Well, I'm glad it wasn't just me being completely ridiculous. No, not at all. I did what I did. Could cut the pipe. Ah, actually. Darling, yeah. that's quite an, an enormous piece of equipment that actually was missing. <laughs> What you got? Okay. What you got? It was coming, it was coming. Okay, here it comes. Hey! Darling, that's so cool. We got water for our veg garden! Woohoo! This is a two, huge moment! Three, four. Friend till the end. 